It has been just over one month since we heard about the Fallout TV series, seeing that teaser on Twitter. And although not a ton in the way of additional footage or content around the show has been shared, and frankly I wouldn't expect much anytime soon considering it was described as being just in the writing stages fairly early on, they were more so announcing it because Amazon committed to making it, not because they were really ready to start a full marketing cycle. There still are several interesting things to discuss when it comes to the Fallout TV series series. In particular, we could look back at several very notable quotes around a potential Fallout TV series or even Fallout movie that Todd Howard has made in the past. And this gives us quite a bit of insight as to what we can expect from this one, as well as just diving a bit deeper into the creators behind it or what exactly we could expect from it. In larger part, this is all pretty good news, so I want to in this video more or less give you a bunch of reasons to stay excited about this series, even if the news or even the release date is still a ways away. But then again, who knows? With QuakeCon just a few days away now, perhaps we will be hearing more very soon. Although again, I doubt they have anything like a trailer ready, considering it seems like the series is still pretty early on in production. So first and foremost, let's establish what we already know about this, as this part is very relevant. So it is going to be an upcoming series from Amazon Studios and produced by Kilter Films. Amazon Studios has made several other TV series, and we'll talk a bit about those. But specifically, we also know that this is a series commitment by Amazon, so it will be several episodes at the very least. And under Kilter Films, it's going to be produced by Jonathan Nolan, Lisa Joy, and Athena Wickham. This being important because Kilter Films and those three individuals in particular are very important or notable members of Westworld. Westworld now having had three seasons and me actually being a huge Westworld fan, there's a lot we could draw or infer from that. But also from the Zenimax slash Bethesda side of things, we do have James Altman, who is the son of co-founder of Bethesda Softworks and Zenimax Media with Robert Altman. And actually, fun fact, his mom is Wonder Woman. But even further, the final producer that is known thus far is Todd Howard. And that actually should be pretty relevant. So when you take that all together, it seems like not only is this going to be a production by Kilter Films, but two fairly large and notable members of Bethesda or Zenimax are also going to be playing a fairly large role here, which you may be thinking, okay, perhaps they'll have a hands-off or just moderate involvement in this series, but in fact, I think they may actually be very hands-on, and we'll look at why. Although we haven't heard much in the way of news or details around this show or even involvement from Bethesda as of late after this announcement came out a month ago, we can look back at several interesting quotes from Todd Howard or other Bethesda employees around the hypothetical of a Fallout or Elder Scrolls TV show or movie. And it's from these we could find out some very revealing information information. Back in March of 2016, Todd Howard did an interview with GameIndustry.biz, this being just a few months after the release of Fallout 4, and during this interview he was asked about the potential of a Fallout TV show or movie, as it was around the time a lot of other IPs were getting such things, like God of War having discussions and World of Warcraft getting that movie. But in the question of a Fallout movie, Todd Howard described being very, very careful and expanding on that with, we've had a couple of inroads, particularly with Fallout, which is a bit stickier than Elder Scrolls. But everybody's kind of asked, and I've taken quite a number of meetings over the years, and nothing quite clicked where I felt, oh, that would be as good as the game. And that may happen. I don't rule it out. But nothing really has clicked where the games are popular enough, and that's their identity. Fallout 4. If there had been a Fallout movie, you'd feel different about Fallout when we'd announce Fallout 4. Four, and one of them wouldn't quite be right, and you wouldn't want that to be the game, where the movie takes it in another direction. I would say we have a pretty high bar as far as what we want it to be if it ever were to happen, and nothing's quite clicked. Even little things, like what does the vault suit look like? Every little detail we obsess over so the game is the thing where it really exists. And although that is a fairly old quote now, all the way back from 2016, Todd Howard actually echoed this sentiment somewhat just last year in 2019. With a similar question on whether or not he has any plans to expand Fallout or The Elder Scrolls into a movie franchise or TV show, he does say, It's come up a lot of times, particularly over the last decade, as our stuff has gotten very popular. But nothing has really come of it. I've taken a lot of meetings, I can't say never, but there hasn't been one up until this point where we say, yeah, that's it. So I actually think these quotes tell us quite a bit. Even though at first glance they're brief in nature, it reveals a lot as far as Bethesda's situation when it comes to a Fallout movie or TV series like we are getting now. Firstly, over the past 5-10 to 10 years, it seems like Bethesda and Todd Howard have had a lot of opportunities and even meetings specifically around 
creating something more around this game series. It's not like they are just jumping at the first opportunity to do this, but rather they're picking the best opportunity to do this, at least based off what Todd Howard's saying. He has seen a variety of pitches, but for one reason or another, these specific individuals with Kelter Films are the right place to take this. But even further, it seems like he doesn't really want to take this in a vastly different direction. Firstly, he describes wanting to be very, very careful when it comes to the expansion of the Fallout IP in this direction, but even further how it would have to be something that, oh, that would be as good as the game. And it seems like based off this quote, he really didn't want a movie to take things in a different direction. It seems like he probably wanted a similar atmosphere or style to what we have in the Fallout games. So there's been some speculation that what if a Fallout movie was to take place pre-war in some totally different setting, like outside of the US where all the games have taken place? And I would say that is extremely low on the likelihood scale based on these past quotes from Todd Howard. Later on in that interview, he describes Bethesda as being somewhat old school, and even just a couple of years ago, he described how he doesn't really like remasters because he likes the original feel of some of those older Bethesda titles. So taking that all together, I have to imagine what we see from a TV series would be very similar or in a very similar tone slash vein as to what we see in the Fallout franchise. Although it also does seem like Todd Howard slash Bethesda would definitely want to be involved in this, like when he talks about some of those little details, specifically naming a vault suit. It doesn't seem like he really wants to just take on a few members from a studio and be like, all right, here's the IP, go to town and show me what you come up with. Bethesda games, whether you like them or dislike them, always have a lot going on, a lot of details to explore, stories to uncover, or even just environmental storytelling. And it definitely seems like they would want this to carry over to something like a TV show, to have some aspects of that show be very accurate. And this was even expanded on by Pete Hines in the past. Following up on a similar question around whether or not a Fallout or Elder Scrolls TV show or movie could be on the horizon or something they would even have interest in. But he voiced concerns about control, mentioning how, even when they, film studios, say, oh no, you have total control, well I don't know anybody who actually has total control over the film adaptation of their video game. If you did, why would you make it yourself? And this article released at the end of 2016. So when you take those quotes in consideration with the fact that Todd Howard is listed as a producer on this series, it definitely seems like Bethesda will have some sizable involvement. It does make you wonder what exactly about Kilter Films or Jonathan Nolan and Elite Joy made Todd Howard or Bethesda as a whole say yes this time when clearly they've said no many times in the past. It does seem like Kilter Films overall is somewhat developing a specialty with near future based sci-fi series. We saw this in total execution with Westworld clearly set in the future, but a not so distant one, definitely based in this realm. And even further, there are other series that with the peripheral has a near future setting as well as a 22nd century setting. So probably in the next 20 years and also in the next 100 years. And although Fallout at points takes place several hundred years in the future and also does have that alternate future setting, from a technological standpoint, they were halted or stunted due to the fact that a bunch of bombs were dropped everywhere. Although one other aspect could be that Westworld had its depth and perhaps this is one aspect that Todd Howard and Bethesda overall really want to see from this series. With Westworld, it was a series you could really pay attention to and get more out of. If you're really paying attention, oftentimes the creators would give you an insight as to what was happening next, or at least some additional easter egg or detail. Somewhat similar to what happens in certain Bethesda games, they definitely have a tendency towards secrets or easter eggs, but it certainly seems like no accident that Todd Howard said yes to the creators of the widely popular Westworld, which certainly has has several similarities with a Fallout future. One of the other big reasons to get excited for this is just the absurd amount of money Amazon has been throwing at these shows. As I mentioned before, Amazon is the one to actually greenlight the series under Kilter Films and Bethesda. And many of the recent series have been in the hundred plus millions as far as budget goes. The Man in High Castle had a 178 million budget for two seasons, Jack Ryan 160 million for two seasons, and the Lord of the Rings series, which is approved for five seasons, does have a budget of one $1 billion dollars for those five seasons. So overall, when you take that together, what I would expect is a high budget Fallout based show that isn't too different from the games. Of course, I'm sure this show will have differences from the games and I'll actually talk more about that in a moment, but at least based on those past statements from Todd Howard, I would be shocked if we got something totally out of left field. If you're looking for what to expect from the show, I think starting with what we have right now with Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 is a pretty good starting point. Which speaking of, this also does raise the question, well, where do some of the potential aspects of this show 
we could see. One of the things I personally wouldn't really like to see, but is definitely possible, is an adaptation of one of the existing stories. Like hypothetically, what if they took Fallout 4's main story and made it into a TV show? I for one wouldn't love that. I like the Fallout story as a video game with choice, consequence sometimes. And personally, I would rather see something different but taking place in the same world via this TV show. But speaking of the world, considering this is going to be big budget and they're likely trying to find a balance between Fallout fans and also a totally new audience, you will probably see a lot of those staple Fallout fundamentals. I'm sure things like the Brotherhood of Steel, which have kind of become a poster boy for the franchise in some regard, and other things like Feral Ghouls or Super Mutants will all likely be present here. And of course, one of the core aspects of the Fallout series, a vault will almost certainly be a plot point in one of these seasons or another. From a writing perspective, it's pretty convenient to just follow a vault dweller because the vault dweller leaves the vault into this brave and crazy new world, you see a ton of crazier, interesting things. And if you're a casual show watcher that isn't familiar with the Fallout franchise, it's an easy avenue to explain everything to them. Even though we all know what a super mutant is, a new vault dweller wouldn't, and the show would have to explain it to the audience, which is helpful when you are a new audience member to this franchise. Plus, of course, Bethesda just in general has likened this vault dweller approach. It would be pretty cool to start off perhaps in the first few episodes or even in the first season as following someone in a vault. Maybe there's some crazy experiment going on. That could be a very interesting plot point. Looking back at Westworld, one of the interesting things they do with that show is, even though it is a cohesive story going from season one to two to three, following the same characters somewhat, there are huge setting shifts from the first season to the second season to the third season. In season one, you are just in a theme park and it is guests going throughout the theme park and towards the end things start to unravel but large in part it is just a functional theme park. Season 2 things are in utter chaos, a theme park destroyed and people trying to find answers. So although the setting is technically the same it is wildly different as far as what the rules of that setting are. And then in season 3 you are leaving the park in its entirety going into the big city, the outside world. And you could certainly see something similar in this series with, let's say, season one is in a vault or is in one area. In season two, you transition to a different area with perhaps a different set of rules. One of the other very cool routes they could go with this is making it an anthology series, wherein, let's say, in season one, it follows one setting, one group of characters. And then in season two, it's a different setting and a different group of characters exploring different conflicts that happen throughout the Fallout world, or perhaps even seeing some familiar faces. Even though I know I, for one, wouldn't want to just see an adaptation of a familiar story like the main story of Fallout 3, it would be pretty cool to have some of those characters from past Fallout games make an appearance in this series. I feel like just having Preston appear in one episode for the memes would be amazing. Although, since it does seem like Bethesda Game Studios will at least be somewhat involved in this, it seems very likely that it will be an East Coast Based setting, as that's really where they are most familiar and have created a lot of the lore. Something else that I have thought about when it comes to this series is how exactly it'll work as far as the games go. It seems like it definitely would be a big missed opportunity if there is no Fallout 76 tie-in, assuming Fallout 76 is still active, which I suspect it will be. Whether well, that would just be something like a small nod, a skin or outfit that a character in the show wears appearing in the game, or even just some more heavy-handed stuff in game events to correspond with episode premiere dates. I imagine Imagine Fallout 5 is still a long time away, probably not until late 2020s or even 2030. We still have Starfield and The Elder Scrolls 6 and perhaps even Starfield 2 to worry about. And I would definitely suspect Bethesda has plans for some kind of tie-in or crossover of some kind, which if handled correctly could be a pretty cool moment. Either way though, for now, that's just about everything we can infer or know about the Fallout TV series and some of my hopes or expectations for it. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. Unfortunately, unless we get something at QuakeCon, I have to imagine it'll be a long while before we hear more, especially considering now a lot of productions are halted, which will only push this production back even further. But if nothing else, hopefully you found this video helpful and maybe it got you a little bit more hyped for this ensuing series. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you all next time. Later.